Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to my review for The Night Before, which is a brand new comedy starring Seth Rogen, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Anthony Mackie, Lizzie Kaplan, a bunch of other people, Mindy Kalin, a bunch of people in this film. And I was really looking forward to this film because the trailer made me laugh real hard and I love a good Christmas themed rated R comedy and we haven't, I don't, I feel like we haven't had one in a long time. I think the last one that I really, really enjoyed was probably Harold and Kumar uh, Christmas 3D or whatever it was called. And that was a really fun, awesome stoner R-rated comedy with some really memorable and funny moments and some heart. And this movie, I was expecting the same thing. The trailer was hilarious. Uh, I really liked the story. It was a very simple story, but it got the movie going, of course. <laughs> you know, just, you know, very simple story. They're three friends, last Christmas together. They're all growing up. Let's have one awesome Christmas. One last awesome Christmas. We're going to hang out and we're going to get drunk. We're going to get high. We're going to have a good time. And that's all I wanted from this movie. And did I get that from it? Let's talk about it. All right, so the story for The Night Before takes place, of course, the night before Christmas and follows Seth Rogen, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Anthony Mackie's characters who play Isaac, Ethan, and Chris, respectively. I think I got that right. And they are best friends. They've been best friends since high school. And uh, they've been hanging out every Christmas for the last 14 years because Ethan, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, uh, uh, his parents died 14 years prior because uh, of a, like a freak car accident, I think they said. And ever since then, you know, he always hung out with his parents for Christmas. And, you know, now he doesn't have parents. So they decided, you know what, every Christmas we'll hang out. We'll have a good time. We'll drink beers. We'll have traditions. We'll wear sweaters and stuff. Uh, we'll play the big piano like in Big. You know, they'll do all that stuff. So they always have a good time. But 14 years later, of course, they all have to grow up. And uh, Anthony Mackie is a professional football player. And Seth Rogen has a kid along the way. And Joseph Warren Levin hasn't really done much with his life since. Um, but, uh, even him, he's like, yeah, maybe we should move on. So we should have one last great night, a great Christmas night. So you know what? Let us go to the party that we've been wanting to go to for the last 14 years. The party that has eluded us. We couldn't find this party every year. There's always a party, a big Christmas bash that happens every year for Christmas, but they can never find it because it's very secretive. But this time they actually found it and they're going to go there. And along the way, of course, hijinks happen. Uh, some people find things about themselves, you know, you know, typical stuff for a, ho a, a holiday film like this, except it's a... Uh, <laughs> It's very, it's very R-rated, let me just say. Uh, Seth Rogen gets high on multiple different drugs in this film. Anthony Mackie, um, well, I guess, oh, no, he bangs a girl and then the girl steals weed from him. Uh, Joseph Warren Levitt's trying to get a girl back by uh, using uh, another character or another person in this film. It's, that one's not actually that r-rated really uh well kind of because uh this this one person really likes to get naked a lot uh let me just say and um <laughs> and there's a lot of really immature humor along the way of course which i love because i'm in, i'm immature i'm stupid i'm dumb and i really liked it so there you go i like this movie i don't care i'm gonna tell you actually right now this is probably the best one of these i guess stoner holiday comedies uh, that has come out since Harold and Kumar Christmas 3D or whatever it was called. Harold and Kumar Save Christmas. I don't know what it's called. I don't know. Um, and it's probably the best Christmas movie since at least Ernest Saves Christmas, which I love. So, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I do love it, but it's not my favorite. But uh, this is probably one of the better ones in the last few years. I, I really, really enjoyed the hell out of this. And not only that, it does actually do, it, it does have a heart. It has a personality. All the characters are pretty likable for the most part. And the movie doesn't waste your time. It's like 10 minutes in and the story, the premise, Premise is just going straight off like they all hang out you immediately feel like they actually are friends you don't feel like oh they're just like actors playing friends you feel like they probably are friends now after doing this film and you could see you know like Seth Rogen and Joseph Gorlevin have done things in the past so and Anthony Mackie's always that kind of like friendly dude that hangs out you know and uh and is very friendly, at least from interviews I see so you could tell they are actually friends in this uh and for the most part all the jokes really work. I, a lot of them are very immature, very silly, but some of them are just so just bizarre and strange and just come out of nowhere. There's a whole dinner scene in this movie where I cannot spoil any of these jokes. The only one I can spoil is uh, the church scene, which uh, is really, really funny in the in the movie and even in the trailer because I, I could spoil it because it was in the trailer. Um, and in the trailer, it was really, really funny. It was a great ending to that uh 
to that uh, trailer. It was a really good one. It made me really want to see the film. And even in this, it's a funny scene, but it's not the funniest scene in the film. There's a lot of really funny moments. And I have to admit, a lot of them are because of Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen's character does a lot of drugs in this movie. Uh, and along the way, because he's a guy that has taken drugs before, but not too many, he, he starts tripping out and stuff and just starts acting very bizarre, very weird. And I love, loved him in this. He's so funny. If you want... Seth Rogen at his best, at his most ridiculous and hilarious, what's the, hilarity? His, 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 his best. Check this out. Actually, you probably should check out Steve Jobs because he was, acting wise, that's probably his best, but check this out. He's really funny in this. So, uh, it was weird watching Steve Jobs two weeks or three weeks ago and then watching this where he plays, uh, you know, I mean, not the same kind of character, but he has, you know, the same beard and same hair. He looks pretty much exactly the same, except this one he's calling, uh, babies fuckers and stuff. Like, uh, <laughs> that's, it's just different. You know, Steve Wozniak wouldn't do that. So um, I really enjoyed this film. I have not much else to say besides the actors do a damn good job. There's a lot of really awesome cameos from character or, for, or from actors I didn't know were in this film. There is one that blew my mind. I was like, what? I didn't know he was in this. And I'm not going to spoil it. And let me just tell you, he is great. He plays kind of like a parody of all the weird characters this character, this actor has played in the past. And he is so good in this movie. He's so good. He's so deadpan. But you could tell he's having a good time. And he's great in this. He's so weird. You know who I'm talking about if you've seen the film. Or if you looked up the IMDb. I'm sure... I'm sure... It's not just a cameo. I'm sure he's actually like... Actually, he is billed because I stayed for the credits to see if there was anything after the credits. And he actually is billed on the um, movie. It's not just a like a cameo where they don't actually bill him. Uh, because there's uh, other cameos that don't bill him as a to uh, as like a star. Um, but, um, yeah. So, anyway. I really enjoyed it. I thought that was a great cameo. A lot of really good cameos. A lot of really funny jokes. Uh, there's a whole dinner scene that's hilarious in this film. Um... <laughs> I, I don't have much else to say. There's a lot of heart to it. The characters are likable. Uh, it's not very long. It's like an hour and, what, 35 minutes? So it gets out pretty quickly. Uh, it ends pretty generically. You would expect this ending, really. Uh, but I do like that there's a couple of little, like, you know, like, realistic character moments. Like, there's a whole part later on. Uh, I can't spoil it. And as I say, there's a proposal in this film that would have ended in any other romantic comedy bullshit Katherine Heigl movie would have ended in a generic way but in this one it was actually kind of realistic in a way in a way kind of because kind of i'll just say that so anyway overall i'm gonna give the night before i'm gonna give this movie i really enjoyed it i thought it was funny as hell uh all the way throughout maybe a couple of uh jokes here and there weren't as funny as the others but those jokes, the weaker jokes, could have been the best jokes in any other comedy this year, in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to give this a 36 out of 40. This was a great film and one of the best comedies this year. Um, and we've had a couple of them. Spy, Trainwreck, this. Some really damn good ones. I'm probably missing one or two here and there. But great year for comedy so far. And, uh, I mean, Sisters is coming. Can't wait for Sisters.